Hello, uh, welcome to Making a Difference uh, here on Columbia Access Television. My name is Jennifer Erickson. I'm the executive director of CAT TV or Columbia Access Television, and I'm filling in for Marco Tapia, our, our regular host. Um, and I'm really excited. We have some. We have three great groups uh, this month, um, as usual. Uh, there's a lot going on in Colombia, so let's hear about uh, For His Glory Inc. I have with me today Janice Threat Smith, who's the executive director. And um, Janice, why don't you tell us a little bit about your organization and um, how people can get involved? Well, For His Glory, uh, the mission and motto is working together in the community with youth and their families. And so we provide uh, two programs right now uh, that meet that mission. Um, one is an academic support and enrichment program, and we're located in two uh, sites. Uh, one program is at Second Missionary Baptist Church, and we meet on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, from 4.30 to 6.30, and we provide uh, tutoring to the children using college students from University of Missouri. We also provide the same services at St. Luke United Methodist Church on Wednesday, uh, and we utilize students uh, from uh, MU, primarily from one of the groups called the National uh, Society of Black Engineers. Um, and all of these students uh, are trained uh, in how to work with young people, and we focus on their math and reading skills. So these are kids in the Columbia Public Schools. Mm -hmm. um, all grades? What grades? Yes. Um, our target population is middle school, mm -hmm. but we will accept all the siblings of the target population. Okay. Um, so that gives us kindergartners and high schoolers, because often a family would like all their kids in the same place after school. Sure. So. Uh, the goal is to get a middle schooler, so if, if you have a middle schooler who's having some challenges academically, um, this is a program that will help them. And so, um, it, so it starts, it, it's, is it a fall semester worth of things? Um, we'll start this fall, September 17th. We're enrolling families, children and families now. And then we also have a term in the spring, uh, starting uh, late January. So your goal is to get people and families to enroll before September 17th when the program starts, mm -hmm. and then it's once a week throughout right. the, the year? Right. Well, two times a week, because there's a mentoring session. Okay. Um, and so that's, uh, I wouldn't say it's just kids who are having problems. Um, we're also now focusing on helping kids to get ahead. So like this summer, we ran a program, and we did pre-algebra mm -hmm. to help students be ready for high school. Right. And so our goal, one of the sites is called Grade A, and our goal is to help students have higher grades. Uh, the other site is called Project Hope. And uh, their, their goal is to help encourage kids to feel good about school, enjoy school. Well, I would think that most parents would want their kids to do well in school and yeah. also be challenged in positive yeah. ways. Um, yeah. So really, um, if you have a child that's middle school age, it, there, it couldn't hurt to find out if your child would fit into this program. Right, Is that right? right? Exactly. And um, so how would a person who has a child and a family, you know, like you said, uh, the goal is to get the middle schooler in, but they have, if they have younger siblings mm -hmm. or o older siblings, they're mm -hmm. still part of the program. Right. Where would they go to sign up for this? Well, we have a website, uh, www.forhisglorync.com, For His Glory, Inc., for his glory Inc. Com. Dot com. Okay, great. And, and we have the forms, application enrollment forms there, and more information about the program. Great. That sounds really interesting. And you also gave a phone number, is that right? Um, yes, I could be reached uh, by phone, 573-268-4372. Great. And um, like you said, oh, I had a question. Uh, what if uh, the children, I mean, how do they get to the programs? You said that they're taking place, uh, one of the programs takes place at the Second Baptist Church, which mm -hmm. is right downtown mm -hmm. in, in Columbia, mm -hmm. and the other is at St. Luke's United Methodist Church, which mm -hmm. is 200 West Ash Street. Mm -hmm. I took notes earlier mm -hmm. when we spoke. Mm -hmm. um, how do they get there? Generally, the mm -hmm. parents pick up the kids and bring them, is that right? Generally. Yeah. Um, we do have transportation available. We um, we're a certified partner with Heart of Missouri United Way, and so we received a grant in 2013 that allowed us to obtain a van. Mm -hmm. And so now we're able to uh, create a, a route to pick up children. Um, we're targeting that van, though, for 
neighborhoods that have absolutely no transportation access okay. whatsoever. Yeah, and um, so who are the tutors? So these kids are coming in and they're being encouraged academically mm -hmm. um, for numbers of reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, who are the tutors? Um, well, our tutors are from University of Missouri, Columbia right now, um, and they are first referred to us by the MU Service Learning Program, mm -hmm. and they're assigned to a community development class or a nutrition education class, and so we have very specific leadership uh, roles that they can serve in. Um, and then, like the NASPE group, um, that's their service commitment uh, as part of their organization. And then we have students who just come in and say, well, I want a tutor, I want to help in the community. Great. Um, there so was something like that when I grew up, I want to do it here. Yeah, so that's another way that Columbia can get involved in mm -hmm. For His Glory, Inc. Yeah. Uh, if you're an MU student, yes. um, do you have to go to MU? Or? No. Um, okay. We send flyers over to Stevens as well, okay. Columbia as Stevens, well. Columbia College, MU, mm -hmm. if you're a student, and this sounds like something that you'd be interested in doing. Yeah. I know I worked as a tutor when I was in college, and it's really fulfilling. Yeah, um, So they can also go to the website forhisgloryinc.com right. and sign up that way. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, we have just a, a little bit more time. I mean, I, I was interested in um, finding out why you got involved. You have about a minute, but... Um, you also wanted to talk about potentially why the program takes place where it does in the churches. Right. Um, when we wrote the grant, the, the thing we wanted to stress is that these children need uh, a lot of support. Uh, and so just academic support is not enough. So by being located in a church and we get to know the needs of the family, then the members of those churches can assist us by uh, helping to provide for those children and those families some of those additional things that just as a tutoring program we can't do. So this is a full program mm -hmm. um, and uh, the fact that it takes place in churches allows mm -hmm. for that whole community to right. take part. Well, that's, exactly. that's wonderful. We have about half a minute. How did you get involved in this and why do you do what you do with volunteering? You mentioned it's an all-volunteer yes. organization. Yes, so. uh, and um, it's from a model that um, I had as a child growing up in Chicago, and the place was called Sioux Center, mm -hmm. and it was where you went every day after school, and she brought in uh, young people from the suburbs uh, to work with us. And because of that, I was able to get into honors math um, and excel in my classes and eventually go on to college. So if that free tutorial help had not been brought into my community where I lived, I might not be who I am today, which is a licensed, ordained, Ph.D. professor in education. Yes, so you're uh, a perfect example of yes. what this type of community right. group can do. Um, right. Thank you so much for your time, yeah. both today and in our community. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, and welcome back to Making a Difference. Uh, this is our September edition, and... Um, the word that comes to mind is synergy, I think we, we <laughs> mentioned. Um, my name is Jennifer Erickson. I'm the host today filling in for Marco Tapia. I'm the director at Columbia Access Television, and we're here with Mari Scala, who is going to tell us about the Literacy Action Corps. Yes. yes. I'm delighted to do so. Literacy Action Corps is a local organization. We're actually affiliated with an international organization called Pro Literacy, um, and our mission is to uh, provide tutoring for people who either need to enhance their basic literacy or who need to learn um, Eng the English language. And we do that by training tutors and pairing them with students to work one-on-one. -on -one. So our motto is each one teach one. Each one teach one. I like that. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's synergy today. I think we were just talking with For His Glory mm -hmm. Inc. and that's uh, mm -hmm. about uh, middle school students as mm -hmm. their primary goal. Mm -hmm. These are adult learners that that's, you're targeting. Is that correct? That's exactly right, yes. Great. And um, I think you mentioned um, that there were a couple of groups that you were targeting in reference to literacy? Yes, we have um, kind of two tracks. And when a tutor uh, volunteers with us, they're trained in one or the other track. Um, one group works with, it's called Adult Basic Literacy, and they work with adults who um, would like to enhance their literacy skills, but for whom English is their native language. Mm -hmm. So um, in many times these are people who are, are uh, that, that were promoted through school perhaps without really um, getting to a high reading level, and now that they're in the work world, they may need to enhance their 
their literacy skills, or sometimes they simply want to be able to help their children with their homework, mm -hmm. um, help their children read to their children, that kind of thing. Well, and I guess you would know if you were uncomfortable. I mean, this you could come to the Literacy Action Corps and get some help with basics. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. And then the other group is English language learners. We no longer call it English as a second language because very often it may be their third or fourth language. <laughs> but um, these are people who are here living in Colombia who um, are having difficulty with either conversational English or sometimes with reading and writing English. And um, many of them are um, affiliated directly or indirectly with the university and then we also work with refugees. So Great. Um, that's a challenging track. That's our more popular track, actually. We have about, usually at any given time, 60 to 65 ELL tutors working. Great. So, so one way that the public can get involved is if you're one of these adults who needs a little bit of uh, tutoring in, mm -hmm. in improving mm -hmm. language skills, correct? Absolutely. So how would that person get in touch with you guys? Well, there are several ways. Um, we have a telephone answering service at 442-4280. Um, we also have a website, literacyactioncore.org. Core is spelled C-O-R-P-S. So that's, yeah, Literacy Action Core. L-I-T-E-R-A-C-Y action C-O-R-P-S dot org. Dot org. Great. And then we also, of course, uh, have an email address, lacolumbia at yahoo.com. Great. And uh, there's the other part of this, which is um, tutors, correct? Exactly. And yes. I'm guessing that if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you need quite a few tutors. We do. <laughs> we do. So. We're almost always recruiting new tutors. And um, we... You don't need any special qualifications. We do teach uh, a tutor training class twice a year, and we do provide the tools that you'll need to work with a student. Um, and we do, we do that, as I said, twice a year. Our fall tutor training class begins on September 23rd, and it'll be held five consecutive Tuesday evenings at the First Baptist Church. So if you so. have, so it's um, five hour long training it's two uh two hours each evening okay so yeah, yeah you're given quite yeah. a bit of training i, I yeah. mean that was one question i had because yeah. this sounds like something that would be interesting to do you meet somebody new mm -hmm. um you help some improve somebody's literacy skills um and uh but it does it you do give them the skills to do that and the right. training um right. like you said september 23rd is when the next session starts so that's Begins. the goal of getting some tutors now right um right. and then we also talked about if, if that didn't work out say you have some mm -hmm. other obligation on tuesdays you'll start again in winter is that correct yes we do a winter training class that's um usually in february and it's on saturdays because mm -hmm. we like to you know, be able to give people the opportunity if they work during the week and can't or have kids at home or whatever and can't do an evening class, we do a Saturday class. Great. And um, so then once you are, you decide you want to help out, you take the training, what's the obligation time-wise during the, the session? Well, um, we ask that people try, commit to meet their student at least once a week. And so usually you want to meet them for an hour, an hour and a half, and there's some prep time. So it's a couple of hours a week obligation. And we, we would like for people to make the commitment to stick with their student for a year, if that's at all possible. Many of our tutor-student relationships are much longer than that, actually. Mm -hmm. um, three or four years is not an uncommon amount of time because wow. there's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and it is very rewarding for the volunteers who develop friendships that last a lifetime. Great, and location. So um, the tutor training takes place Downtown, is that correct? At downtown at the First Baptist Church on East Broadway, just right next to Stevens College. And um, once the tutors are trained, they and their student can meet anywhere that's mutually agreeable. Great. Many of our tutors use the public library study rooms for tutoring sessions, and that seems to work well for a lot of people. Great. And you would also find out more information and how to sign up on your website, literacyactioncore.org. Is that that's correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, you know, I also wanted to ask you a question about why you got involved um, with this organization and why do you volunteer your time? I think you also mentioned that your board and staff, it's all volunteer. It is indeed all volunteer. Why, why is this important to you? Why are you involved? 
Well, um, I've always been an avid reader, and, and it was hard for me to imagine what life would be like without that skill. And uh, I was looking for something that I could volunteer to do that wouldn't take a significant amount of hours each week, mm -hmm. and that was flexible. And this really meets all those criteria. A lot of our volunteers are still working full time. We do have quite a few retirees as well, but um, that's the one great thing about it. You can set a mutually agreed upon time to meet with your student, and that doesn't have to be the same exact time every week. So great, and uh, I bet you build some friendships this way too across Absolutely. town with people. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So again, if you're if you're either an adult who would like a little help with um, literacy skills, or if English is your third, fourth, second, eighth <laughs> language, um, you should contact this group, the Liter Literacy Action Corps. And again, they have a website and an email, lacolumbia at yahoo.com. You also gave a 442-4280 number. Correct. Is that for both tutors and for yes. adult mm -hmm. learners? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time again thank you. um, and for doing what you do. And I hope we can connect some tutors with some adult learners uh, this month. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to Making a Difference. My name is Jennifer Erickson. I'm filling in for Marco Tapia, our regular host. I am the executive director at Columbia Access Television. And this is fun to do occasionally, actually. Uh, we talked about the word synergy uh, with the other groups, and, and I think that uh, learning is kind of our, our key to that. Yeah. Uh, I have with me today Joan Stack from the State Historical Society of Missouri. Yeah. And you are the curator of art collections. Is that true? That's right. Great. And uh, so, you know, making a difference is all about uh, Columbia and how people can get involved and uh, work with the local nonprofits. So what... What do you all have to offer? <laughs> well, you know, the State Historical Society of Missouri is a statewide organization with branches in St. Louis, Kansas City, Cape Girardeau, Wa Rolla, Springfield. But the art collection is centrally located, and that's ah. right here in Columbia at the Research Center here, which is on the MU campus in Ellis Library. A lot of people don't know we're there, and uh, what we, our mission is to preserve uh, protect and share the cultural heritage of Missouri with the people of Missouri in the visual arts. And we've been collecting for over a hundred years. We have over 19,000 works in our collection, including works that have a national reputation that you see reproduced in books uh, that are national. You can find them online. Uh, in fact, if you come to the Historical Society's Gallery, you may be surprised to see some paintings that you've known for some time. You had no idea that they were right here in Columbia. So we're lucky. So, yes. so in other words, they take all the visual elements or uh, pieces and bring them here to Columbia. That's right. And so people can travel to Columbia in the center of the state. Yeah. And, and view those. Yeah, and especially uh, to get to know aspects of our visual heritage, and we collect all kinds of things from the high art, the paintings and the sculptures, to uh, we have a large collection of original editorial cartoon drawings dating back a hundred years. So you get a feeling for the different political movements of various times and how the cartoonists reacted to those things. So that is a lot of fun. But perhaps the most famous artists represented are two artists that lived in Missouri. George Caleb Bingham, who lived in Arrow Rock and St. Louis and Jefferson City and even had a studio in Columbia. He was the first professor of art at the University of Missouri. Wow. Uh, we, have, uh, we have over 50 works uh, by George Caleb Bingham, including some very famous uh, artworks. And then we have over 300 works by the 20th century uh, painter and artist Thomas Hart Benton. And, and many people are familiar with his work at the Missouri State Capitol, the great mural there. Oh, so, right, okay, so, um, and these are uh, artists who presumably have artwork throughout the country. Oh, yes, you can find George And Caleb. the world. That's right, George Caleb yeah. Bingham has a painting in the National Gallery, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and in the White House. <laughs> okay, there we go, but we have uh, works we have, that you can view here in yeah. Columbia, Missouri, and as you mentioned, it's at the, um, on campus at MU, yeah. which is also, I mean, you know, that is considered downtown. We have, yeah. yeah. And we have students from Lee Elementary School and Grant Elementary School that come and tour the facility. It's a great way 
to reach out to the general community, but we want to encourage people to come and visit us, not necessarily with that school group, but on their own. Families yeah. are, are welcome. We're open Tuesday through Saturday. The art gallery is open from 9 to 4.30 on the weekdays and 3.30 on Saturdays. We also do a number of community events mm -hmm. uh, where we're open after hours, and these are great times to come and visit our space, and uh, there's one coming up. <laughs> it's going to be on September 18th, which is a Thursday from 4 to 8, and it, we are part of the MU Artifact Gallery Tour, which is a group of different museum and gallery spaces on the University of Missouri campus who are opening their doors after hours to the public so we can get to know these spaces, get to know these resources. A lot of them are, are great educational resources. They're inspirational resources. I mean, well, this and there are they're interesting. I mean, uh, so would that also include like um, what are the different galleries? I you know I know that there are uh, you can see insects and yes, you can see archaeology. That's works right. Of, uh, and we're actually uh, because the anthropology museum is out of its space right now. Mm -hmm. We're hosting them, so they are going to bring some really wonderful objects just for that night. Wow! And they'll have students talking about those. There'll be light refreshments. We will have some little activities for the kids to do. So I hope uh, hope people will come and visit us, and I think you'll be surprised at what we have in our hallway, our, our corridor gallery, we have a World War I exhibition. And then in our main gallery, we have a really great exhibition. Uh, it's the 125th anniversary of Thomas Hart Benton's birth. And so we have an exhibit of some of the works on paper by Benton, drawings, lithographs by him, some of them world famous uh, 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 artworks that uh, can't be displayed all the time. We have paintings by Benton that are always on display, but the works on paper have to rest. You can't have them on display for long periods of time because of their sensitivity to light. But we have a, a great collection of Bentons on display, and we're exploring the theme of Thomas Hart Benton's American mythology. So ways in which Benton investigated the American experience, our understanding of our history, which is sometimes a mythic, uh, conception, like the exploration of the West, the idea of cowboys and Indians, and, and Benton kind of tinkers with those uh, m mythic tropes. Well, and, and, and those tropes and those, um, you know, uh, cowboys and, and uh, steamboats and river yeah. that we had mentioned before when we spoke, those are things that really are um, hook uh, yeah. kids and families. It would be fun. And so when people come on the 18th mm -hmm. from 4 to 8 p.m., Will they be able to also see the, the, the Thomas Hart exhibit? Buttons? Yes, so, okay. and also the George Caleb Bingham's that are Great. on permanent display. We have paintings that Benton did during World War II, giant paintings that uh, are really popular with the public. I like the larger pieces. Yeah, um, and some recently yeah. one of those war paintings was borrowed by the New York Historical Society for an exhibit there, by the Truman Library borrowed another one recently. So these these have been traveling the, the, the state and the country. So we have been sharing this history of Missouri uh, with the nation, but these world famous works are right here normally so you can come and see them and another event that is yeah, we a, only have uh, just less than a minute great and there's so much this is the <laughs> yeah. neatest thing about talking to you is that people need to come by and see what's there because yeah. there's so much but um, so on halloween uh for, well not actually on halloween but on october 28th we're doing trick-or-treat through missouri history from 5 30 to 7 30. oh that sounds fun and there will be ghosts in the gallery the yeah. ghost of thomas hart benton right. the ghost of uh, george caleb bingham's wife that i'm going to play yes. at. <laughs> and we'll also have stations for maybe the younger kids don't want to meet the ghosts they can trick-or-treat throughout different stations in the society learn about missouri pumpkins, bats, uh, caves, bones, See, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that sounds great. So to uh, recap, October 28th, 5.30 to 7.30, um, Trick or Treat Through Missouri History. This month on the 18th, MU Artifact Gallery Museum Crawl. And at both of those events, you can see some of the permanent collections. I bet people will come to these events and say, let's come back and, and slow down and take our time and look yeah. through things. Um, and yeah, and let's just talk real quickly. Um, the website is shs.umsystem.edu and our phone number, 573-882-7083 for more information. Well, I will probably see you there. <laughs> um, and Joan, thank you so much. Um, yes, there's a lot to you. learn um, about and um, see at the State Historical Society. Thank you so much. Thanks.